For the modern itinerant intellectual, hungry not just for knowledge but for a meal that doesn't completely empty one's pockets, the beckoning of the golden arches emerges as both an irony and a haven. It's a ritual many of us know well, meandering into McDonald's with an air of self-aware amusement, fully conscious of the slight incongruity of an avid reader of Orwell or Dostoevsky, sitting amidst families, students and weary travellers, all gathered under the same roof by the simple need to sate hunger without splurging. Our journey commences with the dollar menu, a bastion of affordability. The McChicken is an institution in itself, a plain seasoned patty adorned with lettuce and mayo, uncomplicated yet satisfying. But let's elevate our game. Introduce the cheeseburger to this mealtime soiree, and for less than the cost of a glossy magazine, you've summoned the tastes of the field and the barnyard to your plate. The interplay of flavors from the tangy pickles to the subtle zest of onions provides a minimalistic symphony for the palate. Yet for the particularly cash-strapped among us, those who may need to decide between another chapter of their magnum opus or a hearty meal, McDonald's small fries shine through as the unsung heroes. Thinly sliced, crisped to golden perfection, and salted with a hand that understands the sanctity of moderation, these fries can be a meal in themselves when the situation is dire. Consume them slowly, deliberately, extracting every ounce of sustenance and flavour. They are the proletariat of the McDonald's menu, unassuming but essential. Ah, breakfast. It's said to be the most important meal of the day, and even on a shoestring budget, McDonald's ensures it's not skipped. The sausage burrito, a warm tortilla embracing scrambled eggs, sausage and a hint of vegetables, is reminiscent of a comforting home-cooked meal. Paired with a piping hot black coffee, which is modestly priced, it's enough to invigorate the senses and prepare one for a day of rigorous thinking and impassioned debate. Beverages present a conundrum. The sodas beckon with their effervescent allure, but wisdom dictates the virtues of simplicity. Water, clean and refreshing, serves as the best accompaniment. It cleanses the palate and prepares one for the next bite. For those cold days or when the weight of existential ponderings feels particularly heavy, a small iced coffee or even a hot latte for a tad more might serve as the indulgence that both soothes and stimulates. Indeed, it may appear as though I'm penning a poetic tribute to the gastronomic merits of McDonald's, yet it extends far beyond the mere bites and sips one takes from this global behemoth. This is about the intricate dance between the esoteric and the everyday, the profound and the profane. Within the confines of those fluorescent-lit establishments, among the cacophony of orders being called out and the sizzle of the grill, there lies an allegory of our collective human journey. McDonald's, with its globally recognized emblem, stands not just as a testament to American entrepreneurship, but as a monument to the shared rhythms of our lives. The predictable menu, replicated in outlets across continents, offers a touchstone of continuity in our otherwise unpredictable lives. For many, it symbolizes a momentary pause, a familiar touch in foreign lands, a memory of simpler times, a reminder of shared experiences. Now, speaking of symbols, who could forget the emblematic Ronald McDonald, that garishly clad clown with a smile that's eerily comforting in its permanence? Some may see him as just another corporate mascot, but delve a bit deeper, and one could argue he's a contemporary jester in our global court. In the dreary drudgery of life, as we grapple with existential conundrums, societal pressures and personal challenges, there's something oddly reassuring about Ronald's unchanging grin. A mischievous reminder not to take life too seriously, to find joy in the mundane, and to cherish those brief moments of childlike wonder. It is said that in the face of the absurdity of existence, one can only respond with a defiant creation or a candid laughter. Every time I spot Ronald's face, whether it's on a crowded street, an isolated highway, or in some remote corner of the world, I find myself doing both. In his cartoonish countenance, I see a wink to all of us navigating the vast spectrum of the human condition, from the cerebral to the silly, from the sacred to the snackable. Ronald, in his own quirky way, beckons us to savour life in all its flavours, no matter how contrasting or confusing they might be.